Hello viewers, welcome to this video. Right, in this video I'm going to be revisiting K3D. So a while ago, I think it was a couple months ago, let me show you. I did a video on K3D. Actually, um, I did a series of videos, I think like three or four videos. Let me search in YouTube for just me K3D. Um, okay, so Rancher K3D Cube 80.2. So that's the video I did exactly two months ago. And that was about running K3S, which is Rancher's lightweight Kubernetes distribution in Docker containers. Right, so if I find there, so there is, yeah, Cube 80.1 Rancher K3S lightweight Kubernetes distribution. That's the first video in that series. And then we looked at how to run K3S in Docker containers using K3D. And then we had 80.3, 80.4, how to use K3S and K3D comes with ingress, traffic ingress. So you can use traffic as your ingress controller. And it also comes with local path provisioner. So you can start using persistent volume, persistent volume claims and things like that. So you can follow these two videos till they are relevant. But the latest version of Rancher K3D is version 3.0, which has a lot of changes gone into that particular version. So that's why I chose to redo this video. All right, so the reason, the another reason for doing this video is I, on a daily basis, I use K3D as my daily driver. So if I want to spin up a cluster quickly with multi-master high availability and so on or if you want to test something new then i would go for k3d it's lightning fast in terms of docker image size the container that k3d uses the docker image that it uses is less than 100 meg i i guess let me try docker images yeah so k3s is 150 meg and k3d proxy is 43 meg so they are lightweight and really quick relatively very fast in starting up the uh, cluster starting stopping and restarting the cluster this video is just going to be a quick one let's get started so if i go to k3d rancher k3d github and i'm going to download the latest version which is 3.0.0 it says it's from scratch so there must be a lot of changes between the versions that i've used previously and this latest version so let's download version 3.0 k3d linux amd64 so let's download that it has gone into my downloads directory yep so i think it's still downloading no okay so the next thing to do is change mod plus x k3d and then i'm going to move this to use the local bin k3d sorry sudo move k3d linux to user local bin as k3d all right so if i do which k3d i've got k3d k3d version version 3.0.0 all right so the quickest way to create a cluster so before you do that you can always uh, get help from the documentation built-in documentation k3d help so you've got lots of subcommands for creating a cluster you use cluster for dealing with nodes like if you want to add a master node or a sub or a or a worker node you can use this one and to get help from the subcommand you just do uh, sorry k3d cluster minus minus help and so on so that gives you the man pages for the subcommands and even again you can do cluster and the subcommand create minus minus help so that's going to give you a lot of options so you can play with it you can really get all those details that you need from just reading through these man pages okay so let's create a cluster by default if you do k3d cluster create without any options it's going to create a single master node cluster so when you're doing this for the first time it's going to take a little while because it needs to download those k3d and k3s docker images since i've done previously it has already downloaded those docker images for me and it took nine seconds to launch a cluster Right, so once it launches the cluster, you would have a cube config file downloaded to your .cube directory under your home directory. So ls.cube, you have the config file, and I can do kubectl cluster info. Cool, so that's running fine. And if I do kubectl get notes, so you have just one node, which is a master node. So that's the default that you get if you don't pass any options to K3D cluster create command. So that's by default, you get single master node. Okay, so now you can do K3D cluster list. So that's going to list all your clusters. At the moment, we've got just one cluster and it also generates a name automatically for you because we didn't specify anything. All we did was K3D cluster create, that's it. So let's delete this cluster. 
k3d cluster delete and if you don't specify the cluster name it assumes by default k3s default because that's the cluster name it auto generated so k3d cluster delete and the cluster is deleted k3d cluster list we don't have anything okay the next way is to specify the name of the cluster if you want to launch more than one cluster k3d cluster create let's call it cluster one it's again creating a cluster but with the name cluster one k3d cluster list okay so now we've got a cluster again with one server no worker nodes and we've got cluster one and i can do kubectl get nodes always it's one master node okay so let's delete this cluster k3d cluster delete so now let's say as you can see here k3d cluster delete it fails because it it is expecting a cluster by this name but we've created the cluster with a specific name so we have to specify the name of the cluster that we want to delete in our case it's k3d cluster delete cluster one so we know k3d cluster create whether giving it a name or not it's going to create just a one master a single master node all right so what if you want to add worker nodes when you create your cluster so the command is minus minus agents two all right so k3d cluster create we haven't specified the name for this cluster but we have specified the number of agents um, it's actually worker nodes we want the number of worker nodes to be two and if i do kubectl get nodes and you can see here now we've got one master and two worker nodes you can also do k3d node list and we've got the server we've got the two agent nodes and apart from that you also get the load balancer that's because k3d is production ready you can deploy a multi-master kubernetes cluster uh, but we haven't specified additional masters we've been always using a single master node but there is provision for adding another master node to this cluster so that's why we already have load balancer otherwise we would have to set up a load balancer ourselves because if you've got more than one master node and if you want to connect to that kubernetes cluster um, you can't connect to a particular master node that's not true high availability you need to connect to a load balancer which then spreads the load between the multiple masters all right so k3d comes with a load balancer so it's easy to add additional nodes to this cluster all right so we've got k3d cluster list and we've got one cluster with one server and two agents all right so what if we want to add nodes to this cluster all right so when we did k3d cluster create agents 2 we specified that we haven't specified the number of masters so by default it gives us one master node we've specified how many agents we want so that's one way of specifying it right so let's say let's delete this cluster k3d cluster delete and now let's say let's launch a default cluster k3d cluster create so we haven't specified the number of workers and it's going to create just one master with a load balancer and then i'll show you how we can add additional worker nodes after launching the cluster k3d node list so we have a load balancer and just one master node kubectl get nodes we've got one master okay so now how do we add additional nodes k3d node add okay k3d node list and we're going to add additional node so let's say k3d node minus minus health so k3d node create is the command and delete is to delete an existing node from your cluster list start and stop you can start and stop your uh, a particular node all right so k3d node create minus minus health so you specify the cluster with minus minus cluster option if you don't specify the cluster and if you've used the default cluster you don't have to specify the cluster name otherwise you need to specify minus minus cluster and then uh, minus minus replicas the number of nodes that you want to create okay so how do you say whether you want a, a master node or a worker node so that is where the minus minus role option comes into picture so if you don't specify minus minus role it's going to assume that you want a worker node but if you want a master node you need to specify minus minus role as server all right so what have we got now k3d cluster list so we have a cluster with one master node no agents k3d node list yes we've got a load balancer and just one master nodes 
Okay, so to this cluster, we are going to add one more worker node. The command is k3d node create. We need to give it a name, my worker minus minus replicas one. So we are saying we need one replica and the replica name will be my worker dash one, my worker dash two or whatever um, it is, depending on the number of replicas you give. So note here, we haven't specified any cluster name because when we created the cluster, we didn't specify the name. So it's going to assume that we are using the default cluster. All right, so k3d node create my worker and minus minus replicas one. And now if I do k3d node list, all right, so now you can see here, uh, so that's our master node load balancer and it has added an agent, which is actually a worker node to our cluster. And if I do kubectl get nodes, okay, so we've got a master and we've got a slave. I mean, we've got a worker node. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I've deleted all the clusters, k3d cluster list. I don't have any clusters. I'm gonna create a couple of clusters. k3d cluster create, I'm gonna give it a name cluster one. And I'm also going to create another cluster, uh, k3d cluster create cluster two. And then let's see how we can switch between the clusters. So it's going to update your same cube config file. Uh, let's say I want to add another cluster named uh, cluster two. All right, so k3d cluster list. So we've got two clusters, cluster one and cluster two. And if you do kubectl config view, and you can see here, that's your kube configuration file. And you can also get the same thing by looking at your dot cube config file. You can see we've got two clusters, k3d cluster one, and another cluster, k3d cluster two. And we've got two context uh, one using k3d cluster one, another one with cluster two. So, okay. And if you want to switch between your clusters, you can do kubectl config view. So one of our cluster context is k3d cluster one. Another one is k3d cluster two. And you can do kubectl if you, okay. So right now I don't know which cluster I'm connected to. Probably the second cluster, I think. Let's see, kubectl cluster info okay it doesn't give you much information kubectl get notes okay so i'm connected to cluster 2 because that's the second cluster that i created so by default i'm connecting to the to the latest cluster that i've created so now if i want to connect to my first cluster i just need to switch my context kubectl config get context so if i do context i can see there are two contexts k3d cluster 2 which is active at the moment and it's connecting to the k3d cluster 2 that i've created so if i want to switch my context kubectl config use context k3d cluster 1 and now if i do get context so now i'm connected to k3d cluster 1 and i can do kubectl get nodes so k3d cluster 1 let's again switch back to cluster 2 and if I do get node, so now I'm connected to k3d cluster two. So that is using simple kubectl config use context command. But if you happen to use this, if you happen to switch between your clusters very often, it's easier to use a tool made for this purpose. So there's a handy tool called kubectx. Let's try and use that. kubectx. Yep, so that's the one. And I'll put a link to this GitHub in the, in the video description if you want it. 0.9.1 let's download that cube ctx 9 amd sorry x8664 so that's the one i want let's download that okay so that should have gone into my downloads directory let's extract that cube ctx okay so that's done i'm going to move this to user local bin which cube ctx okay Cool, so we've got kubectx and if I just run kubectx on its own, it's going to list all the contexts available from my uh, Kubernetes cluster. So at the moment I'm connected to k3d cluster two, I can do kubectx k3d cluster one. And if I do kubectx, so now I'm connected to k3d cluster one, kubectl get nodes. So you can use this handy tool kubectx uh, to switch between the context if you've got multiple clusters and you happen to switch very often between these clusters that's a nice little tool i think i might have done a video on kubectx and kubeNS for switching your namespace so i downloaded kubectx directly from the github release page 
but you can also use kubectx through kubernetes plugin kubernetes screw install um, i've done a video on how to install plugins in your kubernetes cluster so this one kubectx and kubeNS for switching between different namespaces uh, can also be installed as Kubernetes plugins. All right. So what else we have? We have kubectl get storage class. So we've got a default storage class. So you can straight away uh, start using persistent volume and persistent volume claim. And also it comes with metrics server. So if you do kubectl top nodes and you can see the metrics utilization kubectl minus n cube system top pods so you can see the cpu and memory utilization so it comes with the metric server cube cdl minus n cube system get all so it comes with traffic prometheus metric server and everything so you can start using traffic as your ingress controller in your cluster okay let me give you one more example so k3d cluster list so we've got two clusters cube ctx i'm connected to the first cluster let me add one more worker node to this cluster. K3D node create my worker minus minus replicas minus minus cluster. Because we've got two clusters, we need to specify which one we want. I think it's K3S cluster one. Uh, nope, I think it's K3D. Nope, fail to find specified cluster, fail to add nodes to the cluster. K3D cluster list. Oh, sorry. So that's cluster one. Okay. So K3D node create my worker minus minus cluster is cluster one. So basically I'm adding two extra worker nodes to the cluster. kubectl get nodes. We have a master and two worker nodes that are ready. kubectl create uh, deploy nginx minus minus image nginx. So I'm creating a deployment. kubectl get all container is getting created kubectl get all yep so our nginx pod is running so let's say i want to stop this cluster i can do that k3d cluster minus minus help so we've got start and stop k3d cluster stop cluster one k3d cluster list cluster one cluster two all right so k3d cluster start cluster one so I've stopped the cluster. So now I'm starting the cluster K3D cluster list and kubectl get all. There we go. So the cluster has been stopped and started and the part that we created, the, the deployment, the Nginx deployment that we created in, the, in this cluster is also running now. So that's how easy it is to stop and start the cluster. Okay, I think that's all I wanted to show you in this video. Give this a try. It's a nice little tool, K3D very fast very lightweight it can be used in raspberry pi it is production ready i use this as my daily driver and uh, hopefully you will find this useful please uh, share this with your friends and make sure to subscribe to my channel i've got a lot of videos coming thanks for your time watching this video and i'll see you all in my next video Bye bye